Back in 2004, a little film called Napoleon Dynamite became not just a cult classic but a cultural touchstone. Where did star John Heder vanish to? Following the success of Napoleon Dynamite, Heder acted in some films you may have seen. In 2005's Just Like Heaven, he played opposite Mark Ruffalo and Reese Witherspoon as a psychic bookstore clerk. In 2006's The Benchwarmers, he played Clark, one of the nerds who made up a baseball team that represents all the people who normally get bullied because they have no athletic skill. And in 2007's Blades of Glory, he worked alongside Will Ferrell as a washed-up skater kicked out of the 2002 Olympics. In an interview with the Tufts Daily, Hida said, I really enjoy physical comedy, kind of turning your body into a cartoon. I just love bringing characters to life, whether it be through the words or through their movement and being. You can get so much about a character through the way they position themselves or the way they move. Almost every role I've done, I love getting like extreme costumes and hair and makeup and looking different in every single one. After that, Hida played one of a series of suitors trying to win the attention of Kristen Bell's character in the 2009 film When in Rome. Since 2010, we bet you can't name anything you've seen John Heater in. In 2012, he starred in a short-lived Napoleon Dynamite animated television series, which lasted for six episodes. His subsequent movie roles included parts in forgettable films like 2012's For Ellen, 2016's Ghost Team, and 2020's Tremors Shrieker Island, the seventh installment in the Tremors franchise. He's appeared in a number of web series, video shorts, and independent movies, including When Jeff Tried to Save the World. This was a project made by first-time filmmaker Kendall Goldberg. Speaking about why he decided to take on a movie from a novice creator, he'd have told Third Coast Review, I want that passion and excitement. First-time directors have so much to prove, and that energy, focused correctly, can really benefit the production. I felt that for sure on this film. When I went into the audition and saw Kendall, I didn't know who it was, but she looked like a college student, and she was at the time. Hida continued, I was impressed by the script, and we sat and talked, and it was clear she knew what she was doing. And she has a vision and intense focus that I could feel that this would be a fun project to be a part of. Based on this, it sounds like Hida might have made a conscious choice to focus on smaller productions as a way of reconnecting with his love of performing. On the other hand, this could also be a way of spinning the fact that he could no longer command the types of roles he once did. Don't cry for Hida. He might not be seen in high-profile feature films anymore, but he's definitely made a name for himself elsewhere. And that may always have been a part of the plan. In a 2004 interview with SAG Indy, he pointed out that he graduated from Brigham Young in animation and had moved to Los Angeles to continue his acting and animation career. He said he started getting the acting bug as a teenager making videos, and at college he was attracted to animation because of the way it melds art and film. Not long after, in 2005, he was part of Cartoon Network's Robot Chicken, and that role may have opened quite a few doors for him in the voice acting realm, because his voiceover career has been robust since then. He's considered a versatile voice actor, and you may have heard him in movies like 2006's Monster House and Surf's Up. Not to mention Surf's Up 2, the direct-to-video sequel released in 2016. In those films, he played surfer penguin Chicken Joe. Over on the TV side of things, his voice can be heard guest-starring in animated television series such as Uncle Grandpa, Ben 10 Omniverse, Tales of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Legend of Korra, and Star vs. The Forces of Evil. He's also voiced a few video games, including Epic Mickey 2, The Power of Two. Given that he said in the past that his part in the industry might be best described as the underdog, voiceover work definitely suits him. If you check out Hida's social media accounts, you'll see he's never truly disappeared. He posts both professional and personal news on his Instagram account, including pictures of his wife and four children. He and wife Kirsten met in college and married in 2002, before he found fame with Napoleon Dynamite. They are parents to daughter Evan, sons Philip and Timothy, and a second daughter born in December 2016, whose name doesn't appear to have been revealed to the public yet. It's pretty likely he and his wife have their hands full with family life. On an episode of the World's Best Dad podcast, he'd have talked about his Boy Scout leader experience and family life, including growing up with his identical twin brother. He said, my life is, I'm home a lot, I'm home a ton if I'm not working. And then sometimes when I am working, I'm gone for three or four days or a couple of weeks. But more often than not, I'm home, so my bonding time is every day with the kids. So I just stay indoors all day. Hida has turned down roles during his career for numerous reasons, including the fact that, as a famous person, he feels like an unofficial ambassador for his religion, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. As a result, he has an aversion to scenes involving sex and violence, preferring clean content instead. 
He told the South Florida Sun Sentinel in 2006, I don't think I ever will do a sex scene because of my religion and my personal standards. I won't show the act of it on screen. I'd do a violent scene if it was in a war film or the content or story justified it. In a discussion of his career on Reddit, one user alleged that Adam Sandler, who produced the Benchwarmers, went about tanking Hida's career because he refused to act in another movie of Sandler's due to content concerns. Hida's desire to stick to his principles could very well have affected his career choices in Hollywood. Still, according to Celebrity Net Worth, Hida is worth $15 million, so he can pick and choose his projects going forward. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.